Hello, welcome to this video. I'm Emma and Valerian is my illustration business, but fundamentally I'm a sketchbook artist and I'm really passionate about keeping sketchbooks because I think they're a really mindful, excellent hobby to have and a lot of my work comes from them. Um, I've been keeping a sketchbook for about five years constantly, so they are starting to stack up on my bookshelves um, and I've been wanting to do a sketchbook tour like this for quite a long time because I think it, it's a nice change from the formal finished illustrations and pictures that you see on Instagram most of the time and it's nice to have a bit of a look into the background and what goes on creating things like that. Um, I've got a couple of examples to show you. Uh, this little one here is a leather bound book, it's a little handmade one. This is from February 2020 so it's got the first lockdown in it. It already feels a little bit historic and that's one of the things I like about keeping a sketchbook is that you can always look back and sort of see what was going on. Um, a lot of artists really love a moleskin. I, uh, I find that they are really, really nice. They've got very good quality paper and they line up nicely on a bookshelf. I wish I was the kind of artist that would stick to the same sketchbook and have a row full of nice, neat moleskins. Unfortunately, I'm not. I often find that I need a change of scene or size or paper and I get a bit bored of using the same one over again. So this one is my current sketchbook. It's made out of an old book. It's A5 in size and it's got watercolour paper in it, which is quite nice. I've chosen this one to show you because it's got a really nice mix and a lot of different examples of the styles and different ways you can keep a sketchbook. And... I think it's, I just think it's a good one to go with. I was really pleased, I really enjoyed this little book. I thought it was great value. It's an art creation sketchbook. I think it was quite a budget one and it's got carpentry paper in it, which I found stood up really well to watercolor. So the vibrancy was really good. And the other thing is that it's square, as I'm sure you can tell, that's quite obvious. But it, it creates a really nice graphic effect when you've got a square page and you're designing something to go onto it. And then it opens up to make a really nice landscape page. So that's really nice. So it starts here. I often plan a starter page, front page. Um, it's not quite a nice tactic to get away from that blank page worry where you, where you don't want to start a sketchbook, you don't want to ruin it. You can just skip to the second page and then go back to the first one, stick something in. Um, the rough sketches. I love to sketch people. They're a really nice thing to fill a sketchbook with. They're the kinds of things that they can go wrong quite often, most of the time they do. But this one's quite a nice one from Christmas. Illustrations from books that I like. And then on to rough notes. I One of my hobbies is that I love to sew and I'm quite a creative person in general. I've tried keeping separate rough notebooks, but I just lose them, I forget to fill them in, and it works better for me to have everything in the same place. So, you know, you go from finished illustrations to quick pencil sketches to rough notes in this book. And it's, I think it's a really nice mix that I've got here. And then we come to more sort of scrapbooky times of types of visual journals. If you're a creative person, you like gardening or crafting, but you don't like to draw, you can keep a visual journal by sticking in imagery, postcards, snippets of sort of receipts and things. And that's quite a nice way to add something to your, to your diary if you want to keep something regularly to write in. It's quite a mindful thing to do. And a really nice thing for any kind of hobby, really, to have some kind of book that you keep everything together in. So similarly, I often stick in things from my knitting. This is a sock project. It's got the care instructions written in and the different kinds of wool and their colours. I find it really useful to have that in the same place. And that's just another visual element that isn't sort of drawn. There are days when you can keep a sketchbook and it's very much a diary with visual elements, more written than drawn. And then there are days where you have a diary that is very visual with a few written elements and I quite like that balance. It does sort of flip to and fro depending on what I need my book to be at the time. This one's just got very simple written words, little notes. And it can really change depending on sort of where you are in your life. If you feel that you're having a really bad day, you might want to pour your heart out on a page. 
and or not write anything at all just put a little note saying how terrible it was and how you know something gone something's gone really wrong and it's it's quite i think it's quite mindful quite cathartic to have that written on a page somewhere so lots of rough people sketches designs so i was really doing sort of lots of projects at this during the sketchbook because the uk was in lockdown over the winter so i had a few more creative things going on than normal and here we come to a few more watercolours. I love to paint flowers. They're one of my favourite things to do in a sketchbook, along with people. And see, this one's not perfect. I did a couple of different attempts at this one. And you don't see that on the finished illustration. They can be really rough. A lot of things, you know, they, they don't make it, they don't make the final cut. This one's much more of a doodle, the kind you might see in the margin of a notebook. That just goes in. This one was a bit more of a planned illustration. I was enjoying the format of this little book so much that I decided to do it in here rather than on loose paper. Um, and the only problem that I have is that the cream paper didn't scan very well. So that's my only criticism for this book, which has otherwise been really brilliant. Um, this one was for a blog post. It's a non-dominant hand drawing, which is always reliably messy if you want to loosen up a little bit. And here's another example. I've got, you know, a shopping list next to a finished illustration, which has got a couple of different attempts to it as well. And I really want to hammer home that there are a lot of people who want to get into sketchbooking and are really intimidated by not having, you know, things not going right on every page. You, you want it to be perfect. You don't want it to be messy. But I, it just doesn't have to be that way. And I think it takes the pressure off a little bit if you've got a mix of things going on, if you've got some messy things in there. I, it's just, I think it's quite a nice way to go about it. More people. This was from February this year, and there was a really lovely snowy couple of days. It was too cold to take my sketchbook up and sit out there, so these are all drawn from photos. A few more sewing projects going on. checklists. A couple of other projects that I had in the background, I stick in designs and sketches even if I'm doing them for some other reason, they just kind of make their way into my sketchbooks as a place to keep them. I'm not even trying to make my handwriting nice in this book, it's the messiest of messy. This is an interesting one because it's one of those really experimental sketches. You can keep a sketchbook that is for sketches, really rough, sketchy things. They're not perfect, they're quite experimental. And um, you will get some really interesting results there because you're, you're freer with sketchy, rough sketches than you are when you're trying to do a finished illustration. I just thought the movement of this hand was really interesting. And then that's right next to this lovely watercolour. It, it, I was really pleased with this one. It came out so nicely, but it was completely experimental. And you can see it, it's a little bit rough as it is and um, the watercolours all bled. But it was one of those that I was just painting it as I was drinking my cup of tea and it came out as a really nice representation of my day as well as a nice finished illustration, which wouldn't have happened if I was trying too hard with it. That's kind of sod's law. Um, if you're trying to make an illustration work, it probably won't. And then there are days where I want to do a sketchbook page that represents my day as another form of visual diary keeping. Um, and this is one of those. Some lovely stickers. These are from my Etsy shop, which I'm hoping to launch in the near future. And as soon as they arrived, I had to stick them in my sketchbook. I was so excited about them. They came at the same time as the postcards. I often stick postcards on the front of my sketchbooks because I think they're quite an inspiring way to start out. I spent quite a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to do on the front cover of this book because the sort of square design and the black background was so enticing. This was the original design for that page, but I just didn't feel it was right. And when these little postcards arrived, I just felt straight away that that was what needed to go on the front. So I chopped it down and put it on. And it's a nice way to personalise a book as well, to put something on the front cover that you feel sort of represents you at the time. So I enjoyed this um, 
mug painting so much I decided that I needed more full finished illustrations in this book and I started doing a few more flowers and this is where the landscape sort of format really came into its own being able to stretch across the page but right next to more rough notes by no means is every page at all perfect or artistic and I always write the dates in my pages that I'm working on because it's so nice to look back through and see what you were doing at the time. A spider diagram, that's just a work note. Sometimes I merge into keeping sort of work notes and journals and diary things and sort of reminders in my sketchbooks as well because I know that I won't lose them. They're always here. And another sort of page. And then, you know, you do start to come into some sort of historical moments, you feel. You, there are a lot of interesting diaries through history, and they're always from ordinary people who are just going about their lives when something extraordinary was happening. I think there'll be quite a few interesting sketchbooks that have come out of the pandemic that we'll look back through. I do sometimes stick in watercolour paper into my sketchbooks when I know that I want to scan something. Um, I'd, I'd learnt by the time I got this far into it that the cream didn't scan very well. You start to see a few more stuck in. More notes, diagrams, quick rough sketches. More things stuck in. And flowers. I love to collect flowers as I'm walking. I think it's a really nice thing to do if you're going on a walk. I was doing lots of walking in the lockdown and I'd come home with pockets full of different things to paint. Flowers are such a nice thing if you're a beginner to paint because half of the hard work is done for you. They're so beautiful already and they just sort of, they want to jump into a page. But if you're not much of a drawer and you feel quite intimidated about that, you could press a flower to go into your diary and that's still a visual element that could go in there. I think we're coming to the end now. The rough notes start to take over. A few last little watercolour studies. And some lists, lists of things. So there we go. I hope you've found this quite interesting. I love to look through people's sketchbooks on Instagram of their video tours that they do. It lasted me, I think, about three, three months, maybe four. They do vary depending on how many pages they've got in or just whether I'm in a phase where I'm doing a lot of drawing. Sometimes I fill them up in a month, sometimes they take three. So it's really variable there. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's something a little bit different. It's quite informal and I quite like that. I think it's, it's nice to get away from the finished images every now and again. So let me know if you'd like to see more of these, more sketchbook tours or just videos in general. Um, and do put some stuff in the comments if you've got any questions about the books that I'm using or the materials that I'm using. And I'd also like to know if you're a sketchbook artist, whether you use your sketchbooks for visual diary keeping or finished illustrations or for rough notes and whether it does change for you sometimes because it really does change for me. Some of my books are just rough notes or lots of finished illustrations. It really can vary. The other thing is that if you're a beginner and you would really like to keep some kind of visual diary or sketchbook but you don't know where to get started, I do teach workshops around Gloucestershire and I've got one coming up at the end of this week with a few spaces left and a couple all over over the summer as well if you're interested in any of those. The one this week will be doing some book binding very similar to these leather books and learning how to fill them up which is a really nice class but mostly I just wanted to do something a bit different today and give you a bit of a sneak preview into this sketchbook here. I will link any materials in the description and some of the things that I've referenced so you can have a look at but otherwise hopefully I'll see you soon with another one of these videos.